Hey guys, Jackie here, and Rastakan's Rumble has finally arrived. And honestly, I just can't wait to get stuck in. We've got 135 new cards, and honestly, a lot of them are pretty crazy. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what Rastakan's Rumble is bringing to Hearthstone, and how we can potentially utilize the new cards. Firstly, we have a new mechanic, Overkill. Now, what Overkill means is if you kill a minion with more damage than you needed to with an Overkill card, then the Overkill effect takes place. So, for example, we have Ticket Scalper, which is a 4 mana 5 3 pirate. Um, obviously, you've got 5 attack. Um, if you kill anything with 4 or less health, then the Overkill effect will take place and you'll get to draw 2 cards, which is really powerful. Like a 4 mana 5 3 on its own is. Is a terrible card, but if you could consistently draw two cards out of this, then it's actually really good. Another example is Sulthrace, a six mana four four warrior weapon with overkill. You may attack again, so you could use this card in multiple ways. You could use it just over the course of four turns, uh, dealing sixteen damage, killing you know maybe one thing a turn, hitting their face. Um, but if you actually use its overkill effect, you could potentially just use it in one turn to clear multiple things. Uh, it'd be perfect against, for example, the Hunter Spellstone, where they play the Spellstone, they get all their 3-3s, three and because Salt Rays does 4 damage, and they all have 3 health, you can hit one, you get to attack again, hit another one, attack again, hit another one, attack again, and you can just clear the whole thing. Um, you will have to take a lot of damage to do that. But um, Salt Rays is kind of nice, the fact that you can, like, use it all at once or over the course of a few turns makes it um, pretty interesting. Now, Rastakan's Rumble brings us some very exciting new legendary minions. Each class has a lower, which is a new legendary minion in the form of a powerful primal god, which has potential to do huge things in the late game. And each class also has a spirit, which synergizes with their lower. And all of the spirits are 0-3 minions, which have stealth for one turn. The mage lower is Jan Ally the Dragonhawk, who allows us to actually bring back the one and only Ragnaros the Firelord. And for only 7 mana as well, which is obviously crazy, crazy powerful because Ragnaros is no longer with us. He's in the Hall of Fame. Um, so being able to bring him back is, is really exciting. However, to bring him back, you do have to have done 8 damage with your hero power. Which, if you're only doing 1 damage a turn, can take a pretty long time. So, to synergize with Genelai, we have Spirit of the Dragonhawk, which is the Mage Spirit. And it has stealth for 1 turn, like all of the spirits. And while it's in play, your hero power also damages adjacent minions. So... Allows you to clear things more easily and also allows you to get more hero power damage through quicker so you can uh, so you can get that rag a bit faster. Another cool lower is Halazi the Lynx, a 5 mana 3 2 beast with battle cry, fill your hand with lynxes. And these lynxes are all 1 1s and they all have rush. So there's a lot of things in Hunter that this could synergize with. You can synergize with Direwolf Alpha, Scavenging Hyena, Starving Buzzard, Toxmonger. Um, lots of really good synergies. But another really good synergy is the new Hunter Spirit. Spirit of the Lynx. Which is a 3 mana, 0 3 um, spirit. Obviously you've got stealth for one turn. And what it does is whenever you play a beast it gives the beast plus one plus one. So you can fill your hand with one ones from Halazi and then give all the one ones plus one plus one. Like why have one ones when you can have two twos? And so you have suddenly all these two twos with rush so you can trade into things and kind of come back onto the board. And I'm really looking forward to trying that out in some kind of like quest hunter style deck. But um, but yeah, lowers and I, I really like the, the fact that kind of all the lowers and spirits Kind of synergize with each other. Yeah, it's pretty nice. You've got this powerful card and then like support for the powerful card, which uh, which is really nice. As well as the lowers, we also have troll champions, which do some really, really crazy things. Um, let, let's, let's talk about a couple of them. We have, firstly, 
Zul Jin, which is the Hunter Troll Champion. And it's actually a hero card. It's 10 mana. It gives you 5 armor and it changes your hero power to deal 2 damage. So the same as Steady Shot except you can also target minions with it. Um, but the exciting thing about this card... Well, one of my favorite cards of all time was Yog saron uh, Because of its craziness and its unpredictab unpredictability. And it could pull you back from, from really bad positions and just do absolutely bonkers stuff. And the Battle Cry of Zol'jin is to cast all spells that you've cast this game with random targets. So, this is going to be super fun to play. It's a lot more kind of easy to predict than Yogg, however, because it's just casting spells you've already cast. So, generally in a Hunter deck that's playing lots of spells, like a Spell Hunter, you're going to be playing Secrets and Spell Stones and Animal Companions and, and that type of thing. So, a lot of the time when you play it, you can kind of know what's going to happen. There are certain cards where... They have random targets and you don't know what to, what's going to hit. Things like Kill Command could potentially hit your own face, your own minions. Flanking Strike could hit your own minions potentially. But um, but generally, it's a lot easier to control than Yogg. Like, you can just get Secrets, flood the board with the uh, Wolves from the Spellstone, and Hoffers from Animal Companion, Deadly Shot and Crushing Walls opponent's minions. So, Zul'jin is going to be a really, really powerful tempo play. And I am, I'm just hyped to try him out, to be honest. It's going to be great. The Shaman Champion is also pretty nuts. Zentimo. Zentimo is a 3 mana 1 3, which makes whenever you use a spell that targets something, it makes that spell also target adjacent minions. Um, and this can be actually used in a variety of ways. Like you can use it in a kind of defensive deck where you're trying to react to things and remove lots of threats at once by using it with things like Hex, and you can Hex three minions at once. Um, or Zap, just to remove three small minions at once. Even something massive like Crushing Hand. Bearing in mind, you will, if it is an Overload card, you will take all of the Overload. So if you use Zentimo with Zap, which normally only overloads you for one, you will get overloaded for three. Um, but yeah, using Zentimo with Hex is absolutely crazy good. Uh, but you could also use Zentimo in a, a more aggressive fashion with buffs. So you're going to want to have a few minions on the board to actually get value out of this. Um, but you can use it with things like Earthen Might, buffing three minions at once. And if they're all elementals, creating three elementals at once as well. And for absolutely crazy, crazy possible outcomes, you can use it with Unstable Evolution. And keep evolving things one by one, and you're evolving three things at a time every time. So that you can get a lot of kind of evolve value out of that. So, and then there's a lot of other shaman cards that kind of target things that you can you could potentially use Zentimo with things like Lightning Bolt, uh, Lava Burst, um, Ancestral Knowledge is an interesting one. Um, so yeah, a lot of. Lots of, lot of possible things you can do with Zentimo. Gonna be uh, a very one, fun one to try out in a, kind of a variety of different Shaman decks. So far, I've pretty much just been talking about some of the biggest and most exciting new things to come with uh, with Rastkan's Rumble. There's plenty of other exciting stuff, but we basically just talked about big legendaries. Um, I really... I'm excited to try all different combination of cards and different decks. And I hope you guys are as well. I really encourage people to kind of try new things and try different decks and try cards out and synergies and see if you can make anything work. Um, but if you guys kind of want any kind of advice or decks that we could potentially use the new cards in, then now I'm going to show you some of the decks I've theory crafted. Um, I'm going to show you guys one for each class and just show you guys some ways that we could potentially use the new cards. And we're going to start with Druid. Now, Druid is very powerful at the moment and has a lot of kind of big, big decks with kind of late game, late game combos like Malagos and Togwoggle, um, Mechathun, that type of thing. Um, and with with Rastakhan's Rumble, Druid has been given a lot of kind of beast, big beast synergy things. So you can make some kind of big beast Druid deck. But I've gone with a kind of take on my... Kind of favorite deck of all time, which was Egg Druid. Um, kind of how I made a name for myself, essentially. And we have a new egg, uh, Scarab Egg, which I'm really, really excited about because it's fantastic for getting the board. 
Um, so what this deck's going to try and do is kind of be aggressive, get things on the board early. You can get really good tempo out of cards like like Pounce um, and Saranite Taskmaster, which is a 1-mana 2-3. Uh, Death Rat will give your opponent a 0-3, but if the Saranite Taskmaster doesn't die, then they never get the 0-3 and it's just a 1-mana 2-3, which is a fantastically powerful minion. Um, and even if they do get the 0-3, like, there's a lot of decks that can't really do anything with the 0-3, and so you're just going to kill it anyway, and all that's really going to do is save them 3 health. So in some situations, you can consider it like a 1-mana 2-3 that restores your opponent 3 health, or gives them 3 armor, or something like that. But yeah, this card, I'm, I'm really hyped to play this. We also have the Spirit of the Raptor, which you can use with Pounce. It's only a 1-mana 0-3, um, and you can potentially get cards draw out of it using your Hero Power or Pounce. Um, I think Pounce is fantastic, by the way. Same with the Egg. Um, so they're kind of the main two cards that I'm kind of hoping could maybe make this deck uh, viable, I guess. But yeah, Egg Druid for the win. For Hunter, I've gone with a Quest Hunter. Quest Hunter has also been one of my favorite all-time decks, although it's never really had much... Success. It's Quest Hunter's been a deck that I've been able to have a lot of fun with and mess around with a lot, but not really get too many wins. Um, the deck does have a few good new cards for it, though, which could really, really help with it. We have Helpless Hatchling and Spring Paw, which is two new powerful one mana beasts, um, which can, you know, help you complete the quest faster while actually doing good, powerful things for tempo. Like, Spring Paw synergizes with so many things in your deck. Um, well, this deck in particular, like Crackling Razormore, Direwolf Alpha, Scavenging Hyena. It's fantastic with Toxmonger. Um, Halazi is also fantastic with Toxmonger, by the way. You fill your hand with 1-1s one with Rush, and you can play them with Toxmonger to just give them more poisons and kill things really easily. Um, so this deck is going to be a lot of fun. We also have Untamed Beastmaster, the 3-mana three 3-4. Three um, whenever you draw a beast give it plus two plus two, which is going to be really interesting to play, because on its own it's just a three and a three four, which is, you know, it's, it's okay stats, it, it has to have a good effect to have that stat line though, and it does have a good effect, like it's going to be one of those minions where your opponent's going to want to kill it straight away, because if they don't, you can easily punish them and get some, you know, big beasts very quickly. Um, obviously we have the, the spirit in here as well, which can also... Well, it's great to play when you have a lot of cheap minions. And this deck is very, very good at doing things with lots of cheap minions. So, I think different takes on Quest Hunter are, uh, are going to be fun to try out. This is kind of a very beast synergy version. And this is one of the decks I'm really most excited to play. Mage has got quite a few new cool cards. We've got the whole Janali and Spirit and the whole Hero Power synergy type stuff, which is going to be fun. But we've also got some really powerful uh, elemental cards, um, especially in terms of, like, tempo. Uh, now, Elemental Mage has kind of not really been... become a good deck at any point. Um, it's, there's some powerful elemental mage cards that have seen some play, but not really kind of like a full-on elemental deck. Um, obviously, we've got Jaina, which is the most insane card for mage right now. But we've got some, some really cool new additions for maybe a more mid-rangey, tempo-y, or even aggressive type uh, Elemental Mage deck. We've got Elemental Evocation, which allows your next Elemental you play to be two mana less um, if you've played an Elemental last turn. And it's only zero, it's zero mana, so you can essentially get a, a Bombfire Elemental for three, three mana, a Blaze Caller for five mana. Uh, have some really, 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 really good powerful tempo plays, as well as Scorch. Uh, four mana deal four damage to a minion, which becomes one mana if you play an elemental last turn. Now, one mana deal four damage to a minion is fantastic. So, both of these cards could really, really help elemental mage. Um, maybe even become a competitive deck. We've also got Arcanosaur. Um, it looks like a kind of just more expensive dust breaker, but with elemental evocation, you can make it four mana anyway. And in this deck, you, I'm trying to not really play too many spells because I want to use like Mountain Giant of Book, of Book of Spectres and get that type of thing going. So Arcanosaur allows you to kind of still have an AoE in the deck uh, without having any of these these spells that are going to mess with your Book of Spectres. Elemental Mage is going to be... Well, I think it's, it's the best chance El Elemental Mage has ever had of being, a, of being a really good deck. For Paladin, we have Quest Paladin. 
Um, now we have Cheval of the Tiger and Spirit of the Tiger, which both have really good synergy with uh, with spells. Um, Cheval like, starts at 25 mana, but for each mana you've spe spent on spells, uh, it costs one less. So you can get Cheval down to zero mana um, after a while if you have enough spells. Um, and the, the Spirit is really good as well, because it's four mana for a stealth zero three, which is kind of slow. But you can quite easily get that tempo back because whenever you cast a spell, you create a, a minion with, with those stats, uh, like, like equal to the mana cost. So, so you play Call to Arms, you get a 5-5. Five, five. If you play Spirey Steed, you get 6-6. Six, six. And they're going to have to kill the spirit, otherwise you can keep generating minions. Like You can play the spirit on turn 4, then play like Call to Arms on turn 5 and pull something like Righteous Protector to protect the spirit. Um, and you've already created a 5-5 five, five out of the spirit, and then they could maybe... If they don't kill the spirit, you can play Steed, and then you get the Steed on something, which can also protect the spirit, and you're creating the 6-6 six, six at the same time, so you can get a lot of tempo out of the spirit. Um, but another exciting card is the Immortal Prelate. 2-1-3, um, Death Rattle, shuffle it back into your deck, but it keeps any enchantments. So any of these buffs you've used on it, like Spiritage Steed and Blessing of Kings, it will keep them when you draw it again. And you can use cards like Call to Arms to pull it back out of your deck once it's, it's, um, once it's died. Because it's still going to cost two mana. You're still going to pull it from Call to Arms. But potentially with a Spyridge Deed on it. Or whatever you, you've used on it. So Quest Paladin is going to be a really good one to play around with. Or maybe even just like a mid-range Paladin that maybe doesn't even use the quest. Uh, lots of spells like Blessing of Kings, Steeds. Um... Uh, control tools like quality consecrate lay on hands um yeah some slower paladin decks are gonna be really fun to try out for priest uh, i've gone with something pretty ambitious um priest has some really cool new legendary stuff but i've tried to make something that's almost like a kind of dragon soul lyra miracle priest type thing um We've got, like, Sandrudge, the new 3-3 that whenever you cast a spell creates a 1-1 taunt, which could be really powerful for tempo. Plus Grave Horror, 12 mana, 7-8 taunt that every time you cast a spell uh, costs one less mana. So if you're playing a deck that costs a, has those cheap spells, you could potentially get a 0 mana, 7-8 taunt. It's basically like a giant. It's like Arcane Giant, but it has taunt um, and one less attack. But the fact that it has taunt makes it really, really good. Um... <laughs> Obviously got synergies with like Lyra uh, and Dragon Soul, which are a lot, a lot of fun. And we have Banana Buffoon. 3 minute 2-2 two, two, Battle Cry, add 2 bananas to your hand, which isn't that exciting. But with uh, Dragon Soul and Raging Elemental that can make the bananas cost 0 mana, um, it could actually be pretty good in this type of deck. Uh, so this is kind of a fun one. Uh, not something I'm expecting to be super... Super powerful or anything, but a lot of fun to mess around with. Lyra and Dragon Soul are really, really fun, fun cards to play with. So, uh, so yeah, a bit, a bit quirky. <laughs> Rogue's main theme with the new expansion is pirates, and there's a few potentially powerful new uh, pirate cards or pirate synergy cards. Um, to make work. So we've actually got quite a few of the new cards in this deck. Um, we have Serrated Tooth, the one on a weapon, which is not very, it doesn't look very exciting, but when you combine it with things like Ticket Scalper or any minion that's good to give rush, basically, it's just, just a good weapon. And one thing I like about it is that almost always on turn two as Rogue, you're using your dagger in most varieties of Rogue, unless you're on coin, but there's not that many powerful turn two plays in Rogue. Um, so having this weapon on one allows you to play things like Bloodsail Raider and the new Sharkfin Fan, which is really good with Serrated Tooth. Because um, if you already have a weapon equipped, you can potentially create a bunch of 1-1s one and they're really going to want to kill it. Otherwise, you can keep getting 1-1s. One um, we have Captain Hook Tusk, which is just kind of a, a late game. Not really late game, but like a turn 8 kind of like Pirate Rogue is going to be an aggressive deck. Maybe more mid-rangey, like maybe aggressive, maybe you can go full aggro, but maybe you can go kind of mid-rangey as well. But Hook Tusk is like a nice finisher, like I've played lots of aggressive things, I've hit your face a lot, and now I'm playing, this is my kind of last hurrah and final push. And I think Hook Tusk is actually really good. Uh, we get Cannon Barrage as well, which can potentially do a ton of damage and be a really good finisher, but obviously you have to have lots of pirates on the board because... 
it does more damage based on how many pirates you have on the board. Um, it's pretty good with prep. It's kind of a shame you can't hook Tusk and prep Barrage on the same turn, but that would, would probably maybe even be too powerful. Um, but yeah, Pirate Rogue has a, a real shot this expansion, I think, of potentially being one of, the, one of the best aggressive decks. Not really sure, though, when you compare it to things like Odd Paladin and Odd Rogue. Like, is it really going to compare? But I guess we'll have to wait and see. The archetype I'm most excited about for Shaman is Evolve Shaman. Um, obviously, I've already kind of spoke about Zentimo and how he can have so many synergies and so many different Shaman decks. I'll definitely be trying him out in Evolve Shaman. Um, but we've also got Big Bad Voodoo, a new two-mana two -mana spell, which you can give a minion Death Rattle, uh, summon a copy of a random minion that costs one more than this minion. So... Generally, on minions that are good to evolve, this is fantastic. You can use it on anything. Things like Corridor Creeper, Sarnay Chain Gang, Fungal Mancer, these type of minions that are really nice to evolve. Um, you can get really, really good aggressive tempo out of it. And we've also got the Shaman Lower Kragwa the Frog, which gives you... Basically, it has a battle cry, and it gives you back all the spells... You played last get, last turn. It's a six mana four six. Um, and this, I'm just so excited to play it with unstable evolution because you can just have a turn of unstable evolutioning everything, and then get a big board of stuff, and then the next turn play Cragwar, and you get all these unstable evolutions in your hand, like based on how many you played last turn. If you played five unstable evolutions, you get five of them um, in your hand again. So that's a crazy spell. To use. That's going to be a really crazy one to use Cragwar with. There's obviously other good spells to use him with, like Shaman has uh, Shaman has lots of different spells, but kind of only a certain few that are very powerful, um, like especially in a control deck, things like Hex, Volcano, Lightning Storm, so you could also use Kragwar in like a control deck for to give you more copies of the, the most powerful Shaman spells, but uh, yeah, Evolve Shaman is, is what I'm hyped about, sick. Warlock has got a lot of discard synergy in your expansion and disco lock has actually been i mean there was a time where it was actually fairly good but overall discard warlock has really not been that good um quest i mean i personally i think the, the warlock quest is just kind of bad like the reward just isn't good enough um so even with all these new discard cards i've, I've made a discard warlock here which i think could actually be really good i think some of the new discard cards are actually very very powerful um, obviously we've already got Zavas, which is fantastic to be discarded, but, but now we have High Priestess Jeklik as well, which, uh, 4-1-3-4 three, four, Taunt Lifesteal, but when you discard it, it adds two copies of it back to your hand, so you can basically just, if, with lots of discard cards, you can keep getting more and more of this card, which is, uh, is fantastic, and it means that when you're getting more of them in your hand, you're, like, more likely to discard them again, and, um, yeah, the more of them you have in your hand, you're less likely to discard other things, so... It's just really, really nice in a, in a discard Warlock deck. Um, but another huge card we have for this is Soul Warden. 6 mana, 6-6. Six, six. Um, Battle Cry, it returns 3 cards to your hand that you've discarded this game. So you're playing all these powerful tempo discard cards like Soulfire and Doomguard and these type of things. And Soul Warden can just add stuff back to your hand. Like One of the main bad things about discard decks is that you can discard something like your Death Knight, which is such a powerful card. and that can, like, lose you the game on the spot. But Soul Warden allows you to kind of get it back again, even if you've lost it. So, yeah, Soul Warden's huge. We've also got um, Reckless Diatrol, which discards the lowest cost card in your hand. So you can kind of basically decide what you're discarding. Um, like, if your lowest cost card is Zavas, then you're going to be discarding Zavas. You know what I mean? Things like Flame Elemental, you're really not that worried about discarding. So, um, yeah. We, and, and all the discard cards are just kind of overstyled, so we could potentially have some really powerful tempo plays with, with Disco Lock. I think Disco Lock has definitely some potential. Maybe not this particular list, but um, yeah, I think Disco Lock could genuinely be good. The final class uh, we have a deck for is Warrior. And with the new cards, I didn't really have another choice other than to go for Dragon Warrior. Uh, Warrior's got some really good new, new Dragon Warrior stuff. In particular, uh, Warmaster Voon, 4-1-4-3 uh, Legendary Battlecry. Basically, duplicate all the dragons in your hand. Um, and so that you can just get so much value off of this one card. Um, and we've also got the 
Ember Scale Drake, which I actually think has the coolest art out of all of the cards in the new expansion. It looks really, really cool. Like, I want to get golden versions of this card just because it is nice to look at. Um, I'm not totally convinced that Dragon Warrior will be kind of a popular deck because we've already got Odd Warrior. Um, that gains a lot of armor. There's a lot of combo decks in the game at the moment that can essentially just crush control decks. And the best late game tools in the game right now really are kind of like Death Knights, like Gul'dan, Jaina, Rexar, these type of things. So I'm not completely sold on control decks being really good right now. I think control decks could definitely be really good um, when the rotation happens. Um, when Death Knights rotate out, I think things like Hex Lord Malakras as well, the new Mage Legendary, that's going to be really, really exciting to play once the Death Knights rotate out. Um, but yeah, Dragon Warrior is going to be a ton of fun. And... Not sold, it'll be the best deck, but... Gonna be good. We've also got, um, Fire Tree Witch Doctor. The 2 mana 2-2. Uh, kind of like Nether Spy Historian, um, was, where it's, like, not a dragon, but it gets, it's a cheap minion that can get you value in a dragon deck. Um, the benef benefit to Historian, though, is that it would create a dragon that could then activate your other dragons, whereas this activates, gives you a spell. However, that could also be a benefit because spells can be more reactive than random dragons. So, um, so yeah, gonna be a fun one to mess around with. And maybe we could even make some kind of like more tempo warrior based thing as well. Um, yeah, warrior is actually my least favorite class. I don't know why, um, but because of the kind of dragon stuff, I am actually looking forward to play it. Normally, I kind of just ignore warrior every expansion, but this expansion, I'm definitely gonna be uh, giving it a a fair run. Overall. Rastakhan's Rumble is bringing us a lot of stuff to play with. Uh, we've got a lot of crazy cards, a lot of kind of synergies of cards as well. Um, things that can help some archetypes that haven't really seen much play, such as Discard Warlock and Elemental Mage, maybe see more play. Uh, Quest Hunter as well, very excited about that one. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, this video is just kind of... Introducing the expansion, essentially. Um, maybe giving you guys my ideas about how we can use some of the new cards. Um, and give them a go just like I'm going to be. But really, I think everyone should just play whatever they want to play. Try everything out. And just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. And who knows? Maybe you can come up with the next meta-breaking deck. Or maybe I can. <laughs> but whatever happens, I hope you guys all really enjoy the expansion. Um... I know where I'm going to. I've been Jackie. Catch you later. Love you all.